Well, no bag time. This is going to be interesting. So is that. These could be too, I don't know. We'll find out. But I know this is going to be. You have to excuse the noise in the background. I've got my calibrator running right now. So I'm working on. I need to do some calibration checks. So I need to have everything warming up. Yeah, well, not a particularly exciting item, this one. I did something very similar recently. Well, I showed something very similar. It's a keyboard overlay for DaVinci Resolve. So it shows you what the various shortcuts are for the keyboard combinations in DaVinci Resolve, which is the video editing software, which you can actually get for free and use without any problem. I've been using it for a little while now. Not long, I don't know, probably three or four weeks I've been using it. I'm trying out, I've been using uh, Adobe Premiere for years. Since, ever since I started doing YouTube, I've been doing Adobe Premiere. But I'm using an old system, so I don't have to keep paying every month or every year to keep using the software. I really don't agree with the whole subscription model in that aspect. I think you should be able to buy the software once and use it forever. Yeah, so DaVinci Resolve is what I'm using now, just learning my way around that. And this is a keyboard overlay. So I wanted to use another one before. I think last mailbag I showed it is a much larger overlay which fits in my main computer keyboard. This one will probably fit on my laptop. The idea is that if I'm away from home, I'm going to do anything on the laptop, then I've got the shortcuts for that as well. I'm pretty sure this will fit. I guess I'll find out, but it may not. I don't know. Here you go. It's on my MacBook Pro here, a Retina, which I repaired in a, another video. And I've got overlay on here. It's basically right. The only difference I can see here is this button here, the enter key with the bar and the backslash is a bit different. That's the only real difference I can see. I mean, if you, it will still work. Um, just don't hit that to enter, basically. I think we're alright though. Um, the rest of it looks like it's basically perfect. That will fit quite nicely. Excellent. Oh, these finally arrived. Took a while. Don't need them now. <laughs> these are International Retifier IRG 4PC 40K. PBF. They're actually for this board here which I repaired and I've already replaced the device which is sitting right there. So um, I got carried away again. I'll probably use them for something one day. But yeah the board is fixed so you know it's not necessary now. I'll just put them in a box pretend I've never got them in the first place. Oh, just what I think it is. Ah, I've got a claim in for these because these have disappeared. Of course I have. I want to go back and see if that claim's still active or not. It was only recently I put it in. So I might be able to cancel a claim if it's still active. The LM393. These are comparators. So I actually got these for something which I'm trying to repair, which is sitting over here. Just here, I'm trying to repair this board. I've already purchased some 393s and somewhere else. So I got these thinking, oh, okay, these will be cheap. I have some stock ones because I don't have any. I didn't have any of these particular devices, so I bought some locally, which took about a week to arrive, and also bought some from, for stock from AliExpress because, well, these are slightly cheaper. Whether they're real or not, I don't know, we'll find out. But uh, anyway, these that was used here, that device right there, that's a 393. But I've been trying to repair this thing. This is a uh, Electrofusion World of Controller. And I haven't pinned it down yet. I've replaced that. I've replaced this, which is a quad op amp, a rail to rail one. I've replaced this and this, which are both RMS to DC converters. Those are quite expensive. Those are like $15 each, those things. I still can't fix it. I don't know what's wrong with it. I've checked every single component on the ball, you know, all the discrete, like capacitors, diodes, resistors. I've checked everything. Everything checks out. So I'm thinking it's potentially the CPU or potentially the second one over here. It's actually got two processors on it. This one here I think is doing like the calibration and like the output control. So that's like the reference which is used for it. That sets out PWM I believe. And then this is like the brain of it which tells it how to work. But yeah, I think one of those are blown. And if that's the case, there's not much I can do about that, unfortunately. So now we've got this thing, which has had a bit of a ding on the way here. Looks like, see it's all caved in this corner. Maybe that top edge as well. Maybe the whole thing. It's been squashed here. So hopefully it's not caused any problems.
Oh, lovely. Do you know what it is? It's a 0.1 ohm standard resistor from 1988. Hmm. It's even come with this. This has come from Ukraine. It's got 1988 on it. Is this the one that actually came with it? 0.1 ohms. 136349. That is. This is the one that came with this. Oh, lovely. It's this original manual came with it. Actual value. There we go. Look at that. That's brilliant. At least that's what it was in 1988. Which specs awesome, but look at that. In fact, it's got its original value right there. It means I can cross check against that on my gear, which is brilliant. In 1989, it got checked again, and it found to be this value here. So it's at 4970. 4978. So it's a very slight difference there. It drifted downwards very slightly in that year. Wow. What's this? I'm amazed I've got the Scott original thing with it. And it's obviously just like a general specification manual for these devices. Because I've got a few of these now, the different ones, which I've shown in previous mailbags. But I'm blown away with the fact I've got the original one that came with this. That is stunning. New old stock apparently. But obviously it's been tested you know, a year later. But it looks mint. That's pretty cool. So here I've got hooked up to my Siglent multimeter here using full wire connection. Now I actually hooked this up and I can actually see the thermal effects of the connections cooling down after I've put them on. <laughs> that's pretty cool. You just see the level gradually dropping down. So it basically says 0.1005 and it's still gradually drifting. Now this Siglent multimeter can't actually do enough resolution to check this accurately. It's a 6.5 digit multimeter but it's only got a 200 ohm range as the lowest one so I actually need a lower range than that really with more digits to check it properly but this is looking like it's really close to what it's supposed to be so it's looking promising check this on the better multimeter later on I've got some 7.5 digit multimeters I'll check this on and I'll be able to do that uh, my room's actually a bit hot too right now it's 24.6 degrees so it's actually a bit too hot should be about 23 so that will be affecting this as well which means it's likely to have a slightly higher resistance than it's supposed to be well we'll see all right last thing and see what's in this box now this apparently is being inspected u.s customs of border protection wonder why anyway that doesn't happen very often surprisingly it's actually quite rare for me to get items which have been inspected is there something you need to look a bit funny on x-ray padding on the top. I'm just hoping if it's been inspected and repacked that they actually repacked it nicely. Yeah, it's fully surrounded. That's good. Let's pull this out. Looks like the seller followed instruction very well. Well, I said to make sure we pack it with plenty of padding. It does appear to be plenty of padding. Excellent. Anyway, it looks like it's just been torn here. They haven't actually even wrapped it. They've just torn it a little bit and had a look. Well, the seller's going to get a good thumbs up for this one because this is well packed. Lots of padding. Def form approved. Can you tell what it is yet? Can I slide it up? No. <laughs> okay. Yeah, well, there's some nerds out there. There must be someone that knows what it is. There's the back. HP, obviously. That socket's going to be a problem. I might have to try and see if I can change that somehow. So special power cords. I think I've only got one of those on another piece of gear. And there's the front. So it's a uh, original old HP 3400A RMS voltmeter. Lovely. That feels alright. Bit of oxidization on the socket here, that'll be 
needing to be cleaned up. Replacing it might be an option, but I'm not sure what's on the other side of it. It's probably just easy to clean it. Glass looks a bit dirty, but otherwise looks okay. Meter is moving, so that's functional. Switch feels good. Nice, it's looking promising. So let's change the voltage selection switch on the back there. It's set to 115 right now. There you go, 230. Now it's got to find a cable. But what I'll do first is open it up and have a look inside. Oh, look at those capacitors in there. <laughs> oh, I could have a field day with this thing. It's on a riser card. I can lift all those out. Oh, this one's looking a bit interesting. This capacitor has got some, like, some corrosion or something on it. Like, I think this one may have had a problem. It's like it's been leaking. Or oh, it's the sleeving which is breaking down. I'm not sure which that is. But yeah, I'll probably have to go through and recap this thing. There's a lot of capacitors in here. I see there's old resistors as well. Those might all need checking too. So I'm not quite sure what year this is from. I'm just doing a general inspection right now to see what I can see. But uh, yeah, interesting device. Very interesting in there. See what those are? These look interesting. What the stories are that? Anyway, yeah, lots of recapping is going to be needed. Let's see if we can pull this board out. I'm a bit worried about powering this thing up straight away actually. Um, double checking, I don't see any wire connections on his rear board but it's awfully tight hmm in fact I think that's actually hitting on the side of the chassis here it is just there I'm gonna pop that out there it's got this hole through here maybe I can use that to lever it up maybe that's what it's for don't you love the design from HP <laughs> HP design brilliant look at that lovely that's such a nice board I love this old tech like this. What's the serial number on this thing? 52803859. You have to add on a certain year to the, like, the beginning of the serial number. It was at 1960 or something. Right, let's put off the bottom cover, see what's underneath here. Another big capacitor, the size of that beastie. <laughs> but there is some room under here to actually do some modifications to this socket there is room so not a lot of room because you've got the riser car connection just there it could be a bit tight we'll have to see what I'll do about it I might have to just put a hardwired cable in instead that would be relatively easy to do I can literally just put a plate over the top of this put a plate over the front of that put a hole in it the grommet and just run off a hardwired cable in that would work this will be a future repair video make sure you subscribe to see that Love your piece of tech. Definitely needs a good cleanup. That looks like it might be on the inside of the glass. So that meter might have come apart. That could be interesting. Hmm. And some Patreon supporters and YouTube members who help to support the channel. They happen to buy things like this. These little projects I'm going to work on to do more videos about, which are always great. I love working on things like this. This is like towards the, the older end of this range where I work on things. This is like the, right the very oldest sort of stuff I'll do. I tend to do newer than this, but this is like, okay, this is, you know, somewhere I could actually work on this and repair it and get it refurbished. The biggest problem with these sorts of things is getting the parts. Usually it's a case of just refurbishing it, putting your caps in, off you go, and you're all good. But not always, sometimes it's bad op amps and stuff like that. Op amps tend to fail with this sort of era. Do a super thanks down there if you want to give me a little one-off donation. There's other videos here you can watch, and if you want to become a YouTube supporter or a member, or a Patreon supporter, you can do that following links at the end or in the description down the bottom there somewhere. That helps me to buy things like this. Bye.